Good morning, church. It's good to be with you today. Happy Wednesday. We're going to start in Psalm 118 today. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let Israel say, His faithful love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His faithful love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His faithful love endures forever. As we have been reading through the prophecies of destruction coming against Jerusalem and Judah and Israel, I'm sure the people at this time did not quite understand or believe this promise that they were being dispossessed of their good inheritance. But we have this promise that comes in in Jeremiah 24 today. He says, this is what the Lord said to me. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Like these good figs, so I regard as good the exiles from Judah that I sent away from this place to the land of the Chaldeans. I will keep my eyes on them for their good and will return them to this land. I will build them up and will not demolish them. I will plant them and will not uproot them. I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord. They will be the, my people, and I will be their God, because they will return to me with all their hearts. The people were given a choice at this time. They could submit to the discipline of the Lord, which meant going to Babylon and to exile, or they could resist the Lord, deny the words of his prophet Jeremiah, and suffer unspeakable horrors that were coming because they thought that they were safe. They said, hey, the temple is here. God would never do anything that bad to us because look at this place. But we've already talked before that the Lord is, is no respecter of places or people. Everything is his to do with as he sees fit. And so sometimes, church, the right choice in our life is to submit to an unpleasant path because it is the path the Lord has laid out for us, especially if there's a time of discipline that comes upon us because of a, an error we have made or a sin we have committed. Sometimes the Lord doesn't remove the consequence of that sin. We have to walk through it and come out on the other side with a repentant heart, turning back fully to the Lord and trusting this good promise that says that he will be there and he never will reject us. Discipline does not mean that the Lord has rejected us or turned us away, but that he loves us and wants to apply that rod of correction that we might come back around so that we can walk in the light. If you walk in the darkness, you have no part with the light. That's what First John is telling us over and over again, and that we have to remain with God. I have written these things to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you. As for you, the anointing you have received from him remains in you, and you don't need anyone to teach you. Instead, his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie, just as it has taught you. Remain in him. And so that's the, the final word today. Even the, the reality that God's Holy Spirit is within you is enough to provide the way that we need. We don't need further teaching. We have God's revealed word and we have God's Holy Spirit that is within us. And John basically is saying, so act accordingly. And yet all of us are like sheep that wander and go astray and we need help and we need support, every last one of us. And so um, if you have a word of encouragement or a help and support, Feel free to uh, supply it in the comments below. Always love to hear from you.